All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the parts of a neuron. And for some background information, remember, a neuron is an individual nerve cell that makes up the nervous system. It allows information to travel throughout the human body. So whether you want to move your muscles, detect things in the world that are hot or cold, speak, make decisions, or even understand what I'm saying, all of that cannot be done without a healthy functioning neuron. So let's go over how it works. The first structure I want to focus on are these little branches right here. It's almost like the little fingers on my hand. These are called dendrites. What are they called? Dendrites. So all of these little branches are dendrites. And what do dendrites do? Dendrites receive the message from another neuron. The way we communicate is through language and words, right? But neurons communicate through chemical messages specifically things called neurotransmitters. Imagine, for example, this is a neurotransmitter. There's many types. It could be dopamine, which is a reward-seeking, very pleasure neurotransmitter. It could be acetylcholine, which controls our muscles. It could be endorphins, which is a pain reliever. This is going to be released by another neuron, and it's going to bind on the dendrites. It's going to be received like a lock and key. This dendrite, this dendrite, this dendrite, whichever it is. It's going to bind to that uh, receptor site. Now, once it binds, it's going to be integrated and interpreted by this area right here called the soma or cell body. And the soma is where you can find the nucleus, right? The genetic material of the neuron. It helps sustain life of the neuron as well. Now, before information travels down this long tube right here, notice that the soma connects to this tube by this little structure right here, okay? This is what we call the axon hillock, okay, axon hillock. And this is important. Why is it important? If the signal is strong enough, okay, we'll talk about that in another video. If the, if the information is strong enough, what's going to happen is this is going to generate an electrical charge called an action potential. And here is our electrical charge. There we go right here, okay? And that's going to start in the axon hillock. And that's going to travel down this long tube right here. What is that tube called? This is called, and it's in here, the axon. And the cool thing about the axon is that it could be very, very tiny, just a few millimeters in the brain, to up to a few feet long, let's say going from your spinal cord to your toes. So the axon carries the electrical signal, the active potential, down here to the end of the neuron. Now, this is important. You want things to go fast, right? If you're in an emergency, something in danger, you want that charge to go really fast on the axon. Well, how do we ensure that it's a fast signal? The axon is covered by something called the myelon or myelon sheath. Okay, the myelon sheath. You might have heard the words uh, glial cells or Schwann cells. A lot of this means essentially the same thing. You have glial cells, or more specifically Schwann cells, that form or make this myelon. And the myelon acts as an insulator, right? It's like kind of like a, 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 wire to, a wire with rubber tubing around it. It helps protect and speed up that impulse so it goes really fast. And just for some background information, if you've ever heard of something called multiple sclerosis, right? This horrible disease that affects communication through the body, it disrupts the myelon. It destroys the myelon so information doesn't get from point A to point B. Now, not every axon has myelon, right? In fact, we can kind of divide this into two types. We can say there are, you know, unmyelinated, unmyelinated axon, and then there's also myelinated axon, okay, myelinated. Most of, there we go, there's a D, myelinated on my, most of the neurons in the nervous system, central peripheral, are myelinated. Why? Because we need things to happen very quickly. But of course, there are axons that are unmyelinated. Now, the color of it, and this is actually interesting to know, is the color is white. Okay, now why is that important? Okay, if we know anything about gray matter and white matter in the brain, well, white matter in the brain is essentially made up of myelinated axons. Okay, that's what gives it the color white. And if you've ever heard of gray matter, 
okay, in the brain. It's called gray matter essentially because it's the color gray because those are unmyelinated. Okay, there aren't any axons that have myelin. So there's just some inter interesting background on the myelinated versus unmyelinated. Now there is another way to make this action potential go even faster down the axon. And how is that? You notice these little tiny gaps between the myelin, okay? These gaps are what we call the nodes of Ranvier or Ranvier. I always see different names for it, all right? So these are these little tiny gaps in the myelin, okay? Do you ever take a rock and skip it across the water and it just goes poof, 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 right? These are what the nodes do, right? So here's our action potential. And when you have myelinated axons, instead of going through the axon, what happens is they bounce from node to node. And this helps speed up the process even more. So instead of going through, it goes bounce, 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 all the way to the end of the axon. All right, so what is the end of the axon? These little branches here are what we call the axon terminal. Or you might say synaptic buds. There's always so many names for all these things. Axon terminal. Okay, and this is where, let's get back to our neurotransmitters, our neurotransmitters are stored in synaptic vesicles. And what's gonna happen is once the action potential hits there, these are gonna be released and bind to receptors of the next postsynaptic neuron. Now, two neurons don't actually touch each other. It's going to be released into an area called the synapse, is a small gap or junction between two neurons, and that's gonna bind to a receptor of another neuron. So there we go, there's the parts or main parts of a neuron. Now it is important to note, not all neurons look the same. Even though they have roughly the same parts, they can look very different. So for example, this first one is what we call a motor neuron. You can see it actually is the typical neuron that you would see if you Googled something like that, all right? Another, oh, another word for motor neuron is a multi, multipolar neuron. Okay, you can have, let's say, a sensory neuron. Okay, sensory neuron. And this is actually another word is unipolar neuron. And you can even have something called an interneuron. Okay, and this would be considered a bipolar neuron, right? So many different names. And you can find bipolar neurons in the retina. Okay, in your eye next to the ganglion cells. So motor neurons would help move my muscles, right? Afferent or efferent that exit the brain help me move. Sensory neurons detect information from the environment, right? Hot, cold, smells, and sights. And inner neurons connect or help uh, link the motor and sensory neurons. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.